We know that Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel are still on the San Francisco 49ers. They didn't trade them last week. During the draft, Kyle Shanahan at one point acted like, hey, we're, we're always going to listen. Doors always open, open for business. It makes no sense to trade them now, though, because unless you get something that's going to help your team get better this year, you're just getting 2025 20, draft picks. How does that make you better? Last week was the time to make the trade to get something that could maybe make you better this year. Here is Lynch from Pat McAfee's show talking about how they will navigate the 49ers situation with Ayuk wanting a new contract and Debo possibly not fully living up to the one that he has. I love our roster. I love the way it's comprised. As I said, we were right there and we got to find a way to get just a little bit better. And I'm doing everything in my power uh, to keep our roster together. And that's my goal. And I don't question that. I've got so much belief. When you talk about guys like Brandon Ayuk and Debo, they're guys we drafted. They're guys we take a lot of pride in what they've become, who they've become. And we couldn't be more proud of those guys. And so, you know, during the course of drafts and off seasons, do conversations happen? Absolutely, they do. We're past that now. And, you know, we're thrilled to add to that group, Jawan Jennings, Brandon Ayuk, uh, Debo Samuel, Chris Conley, Ronnie Bell, Danny Gray. And now you add Ricky Pearsall, Jake Cowing. Look, they're past it, but here's the problem. Brandon Ayuk still isn't happy with his contract. And I don't think Brandon Ayuk's showing up. For $14.12 million. I believe they were hoping they could hold it all together for one more year. With Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, and Brock Purdy. Before Purdy is eligible for contract number two, and they got to deal with that. Let's hold it together. The problem is Ayuk isn't going to go along with $14.12 million. He's put in his four years. This is year five. Pay me or trade me to someone who will. And the problem is... Whatever discussions were had, and I think that John Lynch gave Brandon Ayuk's agent permission to shop Brandon Ayuk. The problem is you got to find somebody who will offer enough more than the 49ers were offering and give the 49ers enough to get the 49ers to say, we'll do the trade. And it just didn't happen. So now they try to move forward. And if they want to play hardball, I guess they can. And maybe they need to because the problem is they blinked with Debo Samuel when he wasn't happy a few years ago. They blinked with Nick Bosa after a long holdout. If Brandon Ayuk stays away from training camp and skips out on preseason games, when you're under your fifth-year option, your fine for missing a preseason game is a regular season game check. It's still waivable, but maybe they're going to play hardball with Brandon Ayuk. Maybe that's what's next because they did. They did give in and give the contract to Debo Samuel. They did give in and give the contract to Nick Bosa. Their only real choice is to just sit back, fold their arms, and say, hey, Brandon, you're under contract this year. You show up. We're not going to give you a new contract. We expect you to honor your contract, even though it's this weird fifth-year option that really wasn't part of the initial contract, but it's one of the rights that the team has under the collective bargaining agreement. But, I mean, but Brandon Ayuk, I think, is in his rights to at least, you know, right now, not show up for the voluntary offseason program. And I feel like, if you're Brandon Ayuk, you've got a good argument that you should be making more than 14.1 million. I mean, look Agreed. at what he did last year. Look at the way that he has elevated Brock Purdy. I mean, those two have really, really, really good chemistry, right? Verging on special. So if you want that kind of production, you should be willing to pay for it. And that's the argument for Brandon Ayuk. And I, frankly, I really understand it because especially as a skill position player, Right. And we were talking earlier about how quarterbacks and they're protected and all this, you know, he's one play away from getting a disastrous knee injury that potentially bleeps up the rest of his career. So you have to be able to get paid when you can. And this is one of the few times in his career where he might have the leverage in order to get that. And so, yeah, if you're the 49ers, you pay Debo Samuel, you know, you know that you've got a big payday for Brock Purdy unless the wheels completely fall off the wagon this coming year on the horizon, right? Because as a seventh round pick, I mean, my gosh, is he going to be entitled to a raise going into year four, right? This is the best bargain maybe ever at quarterback that we've seen, you know, when you have Brock Purdy coming in as the last pick of the draft and then becoming a viable starting quarterback. So there's a lot at play here for the 49ers. And this is a sort of last dance, if you will, type season coming up in 2024 based on the way the contracts are. But 
if you're Brandon Ayuk, it, it's bleep all that, man. This is the time for me to get paid right now. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, but if there is a team that can make it worth the 49ers while to trade for Brandon Ayuk, well, I mean, like, and that'd have to be some sort of first round pick, right? I mean, at this point, then maybe they would listen. They always say they'll listen. But I, other than that, I, I don't really know where this goes other than Brandon Ayuk saying, hey, I'm, I don't want to do this unless you pay me. Here's the problem, and it's becoming inherent to the position as well. Yes, he deserves more. How much more? You've got the market that is stretching all the way to $32 million per year in new money average for the A.J. Brown deal. You're going to have the market explode with Justin Jefferson if and when the Vikings quit playing games and get the deal done because the clock is ticking and it only keeps getting more expensive. Then you've got Jamar Chase. Where does Brandon Ayuk fall in the hierarchy of receiver contracts? And mm-hmm. at what point do the 49ers say, you know what? Brandon Ayuk benefits from having Kittle and Samuel and McCaffrey and Purdy and Trent Williams and – Point Sims made Shanahan within the past couple of weeks. Shanahan, look at the highlights of Brandon Ayuk wide open. How do you get wide open? Is it because he's blowing by people? Or is it because Shanahan's drawn up these plays that allows Ayuk to slip through a crack because he's the one they're not accounting for and he's wide open? And can we put Ricky Pearsall in that same role? Tough call for the 49ers. And they want to keep him, but they want to keep him on their terms. He wants to stay on his terms. And yeah. The game that might get played is you're you're under contract, sir, and you must report. But the problem is, look at what they did with Debo. He stayed yeah. away from the offseason program, and he took a step back the next year when he got his contract. Nick Bosa, deep holdout. He wasn't the same Nick Bosa. He was still great, but he wasn't dominant last year. He wasn't there until deep into training camp and preseason. So it's better to get these things fixed and get everybody on the same page and lay the foundation for a big year. So the 49ers still have a problem that they have to figure out, and we'll see if they do. Let's take a break. When we return, uh, how much longer will Matthew Stafford be the quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams? Sean McVay had something to say about that yesterday. We will share it with you next here on PFT Live. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.